Hi guys, it's me Karen and I've come to do part two of The Magical Dawn by Hannah Carlson and we are doing the swan and I finished the uh, little tail feathers here and we're going to be doing some work on the other, um, the wings I guess here. So I'm going to set up the um, camera so you can see we're going to do uh, these little sections here in the green and then all the uh, fluffies down here are going to be done in the purple along with the one up here on his head and then the um, other wings here are going to be done in the blue tones crown and beak are going to be do done in kind of a yellowish uh, you know what the beak color is it's also going to be the crown color with a tiny bit of brown to make it look gold and then everything else here is going to be stickled and an inking in the background so i'm going to set up the camera and we will get to it Okay, so we should be set right here, and I'm going to start with the green, and we are using moss green, green ochre, and um, putty beige. So we're going to start with uh, the moss green, find it, i got to kind of sharpen it, but I'll go ahead and start here. So we'll put that down on this one side here. Darkest down in the um, tiniest spot here. Lighten it as you go up. And we're just going to do that on all of these going upward and all of these down here. So we'll bring that in and we'll start the second row here. Okay, then we're going to come in with the green ochre here on the other side. Blend it down there a little bit and bring it up on the other side, leaving a space up there. I'm going to go over um, the areas that I'm coloring over either in a black or in um, some stickles because this little guy is going to be uh, stickled up. <laughs> He's got a lot of sparkle on him. Okay. Then we're going to go in with the putty beige. And just kind of mix those together. This is how all of them are going to be done. So I thought I'd just do a couple of them and do the rest off camera because I'd like to get as much of this done in the second part as I can. Okay, so that's how those are going to look. We're going to go back in with the uh, green moss. Darken that up just a little bit more. And just to make sure we have that all blended. And then we'll go in with the um, green ochre and just do the same thing. Kind of bring some of that up into the putty beige and into the moss green down here. Okay. 
So that's how that will look. And that will be going all the way up. And then I will get out the blues and show you how I'm going to do that. So we have the indigo blue, the blue slate, and the... Um, I can only read one half of this pencil, so it's blue, seal pale. <laughs> so I'm assuming that's sky blue or something. I do have to sharpen that. See, it is a small pencil. Hopefully it doesn't get stuck in my pencil sharpener. <laughs> yeah, that's good enough. Okay, so we're going to start. I'm going to leave these little... Um, round areas here and I'm just going to do these flowing feathers here so let's find a nice one we can start on it's confusing this this is the beginning of them so this one here so we're going to darken the one side down at the bottom This one's a small one, so I have to sharpen all the pencils. I'm sorry I should have done that so you don't have to listen to the pencil sharpener. I didn't take into considering how small this one is. So this is the blue slate right on top of that. Then we'll go in with the lightest blue. And then it kind of just blends everybody together. And then we'll wipe that off. Then we'll do the next one. It's a little bit bigger. So you'll be able to see it a little bit more. I think that's part of that one. Okay, we're going to go in with some of the slight blue. And then the lightest blue. If you want it darker in the middle, you just go back in with the dark indigo and darken that up a little bit. And we'll just continue going up on this one. Slight blue. And then the lightest blue over the whole thing.
and then back down the middle with the indigo darken up any areas that you want nice and dark we'll also throw a little black in there just to get it really dark in there go down the other one but that's how those uh, feathers will be done then I'll show you how we're going to do the purple ones. So grab the purple pencils. Pretty sure we're still in the frame here. So we have the black grape. And for this one, we're going to go down into the fluff and bring it upward. Some of these are going to be longer than others, so they will have a little more uh, to them, but for these little ones, we're just going to do that. Then bring in the Parma Violet. Okay, then we'll go in with the gray lavender and bring it on up. And I've got to kind of be uh, mindful. I could dig a bay or a light um, peach in there. I have to get the eraser and move that out of there. This one, I'm going to add a little more of the Parma Purple in, and I'm going to add a little of the dark up here in these feathers. Blend them a little bit better together. And then leave the gray lavender in here. And if I would like it a little brighter, I'll take a little white and just highlight that a bit more. goes up here. <laughs> I gotta erase that. Let's see if I can. My eraser's got a bunch of colored pencil on it. I'm gonna get that clean. Okay, and um, get it right here. Okay, we'll go back in with the uh, Parma gray here first. And then add in the gray lavender to give it a nicer color there. And if we have any other ones that we have like that, we will fix them like that too. Okay, so basically that's how the fluff is gonna be done. The fluff goes all the way up here, all the way around here, and up here on his head. So if I have the um, head, I will show you how I'm gonna do that one up here. I'm going to start with uh, a dark piece here, and then we'll do this one as a light one at the other end. So he'll have some that are light and dark. So if I start with a dark one, the next one that touches I want light. So this one will be light, that one will be light, this one will be dark. And since this doesn't touch, um, and these are all going to be dark. This one can be dark down here. Okay. Then we take in the Parma Violet and add that in. We're going to 
add in the grayed lavender. Then we're going to put the grayed lavender in on that one. And we're going to take the dark. that in and then the Parma. And then the gray lavender. I'll blend those out just a little bit better. I have to get really close to that thin lines, but that's how that'll look. So I will um, do the rest of these off camera and get them done for you, and I'll be right back. Okay, we have finished the um, feathers, the wings. So I did the purple down here, and I did it the same way as I did um, the fluffs up the top. And I did off and on dark at the base and then light. So it goes dark, light, dark, light, dark, light. So we get a depth of fluffles. I'm calling them fluffles. I don't know what else to call them. <laughs> and I went ahead and did the um, bottom circles here in the green also. And I'm going to do some of these in black. And then I'm going to kind of add another dimension of color underneath there because I'm going to put some um, stickles in there along with in the jewelry here and on this out here. We're going to do the crown and the beak and I am allowing myself to bring in some color for that because I really think that the uh, beak should be the right color didn't really want to do it green and I didn't want to do it purple or blue so I'm gonna go ahead and bring in some beakish colors <laughs> so we have a yellow orange what do we have here goldenrod and probably a yellowish color here mm, we'll go with we have trying to look at my case here Spanish orange which looks yellow it's going to be yellow I don't see my favorite color here so it must be out and about on my desk I'm not going to try to look for it and then we have a chocolate out here also so these are my colors I will leave them in the description box below and we're going to go ahead and add in some of these for the, hold on, just one second. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start with the um, Spanish orange here. I'm trying to um, I'm going to put a little of that kind of up here on the top of the beak because it looks to be the brightest of the colors do I have his beak in frame so you can see I'm going to bring in some of the yellowed orange and add that in And then there's actually a kind of a black on their beak that runs down here and up here. And I am not going to put um, black in there because he doesn't have black on his uh, area here. So 
so I'm thinking that I might want to add a little bit of the purple in there a bit. Debating on that. Is this the purple? If it's black raspberry, we don't want black raspberry. We want the black grape. <laughs> so let's see if we add that in there. Just a little bit and we'll get it into the kind of a shading there. And we're going to add a little bit of the goldenrod down on the bottom here and blend it in with the purple. Doesn't look too bad. Might want to add a little of that purple on this side too. Just real light. Okay, now we're going to take these same colors and we're going to put them up in the crown. So that's the lightest yellow here. I'm going to go over these um, circles because. Whoop, Sharpen these pretty sharp. My pencil sharpener is set on the um, sharpening for polychromos, and I just haven't lowered it yet. So when I sharpen, I get everything really sharp. <laughs> okay, bring in a little here too. Then we'll bring in the golden rod. Add a little bit of that in there. And then we're going to add in the chocolate. I need to get a sharper point on the chocolate, so I will sharpen that real quick. Yeah, I'll try to get it out of the sharpener. There we go. <laughs> I'm going to add a little of that in here. Okay. We're gonna on the um the little dots and such on the crown we will be adding the stickles also. I had mentioned he's gonna get pretty blinged up. Okay, and we'll add a little of this. Also down here on his beak. Okay. Okay. So now we have a beak and a crown. Now before I decide to um, put the stipples and all that down, I'm going to ink a bit of a background on here. So I have to get out the ink and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've decided after long deliberation, <laughs> um, kind of like the blue, but wasn't all that crazy about it. I like the uh, pink idea, but I also want to bring in some oxide. And these two will mix. They change different with a little spray of water and they are totally um, different inks, okay? <laughs> this one is a water-based ink and, and this is an oxide, which is a hybrid ink. So half of this is water and half of it is not. So it's like more of a, uh, this one will sink into the paper 
This one sits on top of the paper. It has a really cool effect with water. This one does too, but this one has uh, kind of a neater effect. So I'm going to go ahead and put down some of this around, and then we're going to add some of that into it. And we are going to see how this works. So anybody who has a bunch of oxide ink laying around, if you look at this, this is a little of the ink that I just put down, and this is the oxide ink, and you can tell the difference here. And this one is still isn't not dry, it's wet. This one's totally dry. Neither one of them, well, the oxide kind of goes through the paper a little bit, but that's because I pressed on it. <laughs> the distress ink doesn't. Anyway, um, here I go. We're just putting it on the corner and just brushing it in. It's the same color as um, the swan, so it's okay if we get some of that on her. And we're just going to kind of bring it around. And bringing it up. And it's okay if we get a little splotchy. Because we're going to bring in another ink. And we're going to dump in water. So put this around the neck. Coming down here. Sorry, the neighbor's dog is going nuts over something. Okay. All right. Now we're going to take some of the oxide. I'm not going to change the pad because I have to wash these out anyway. The um, oxide ink will change the color on this. And when it goes down, you'll notice a difference. It's a little thicker. It's creamier. It'll blend nicer, but that's only because it's sitting on top of the paper. And add it in in some areas. Because I want to get a a wet ink effect on this. We'll put some in the crown too. There we go. So you got a nice smooth look. You have two different kinds of inks on there and they're going to react different with the water. Okay, now where can you see good enough? We're going to do it up here in this portion up here. We're going to spray it with water. Give ourselves a couple of seconds here for it to react and wipe it up okay when this dries it's gonna look really cool <laughs> longer you let it sit the more the ink will be picked up you don't want too much pickup don't let it sit too long. It'll also wipe off your, um, let that sit a little more down here on this page. Any ink will wipe right off of the um, hair on there, the wax on your drawing. Okay, just gonna let that sit for a little while longer so we can get a little brighter color there. There we go. And that's the um, cool look. Now the oxide will actually kind of give you a, a little bit more of a silver look here when it dries. The distress, distress ink will just go right back down to the paper. I needed to get a little more up there. Big splotch there. Boom. So the only thing I don't like about the oxide is its um, opacity. 
I like a more transparent look to this. I was going to get another clip and hold it down here. Sorry. <laughs> Just clip it onto that board there. Okay, so now we're going to get the stickles. And the stickle came up. So we have a diamond stickles. I also have to do his eye, but that will be done a little later. I'm going to go in here with some black on these teeny tiny little lines in here, but the other parts I'm going to do in stickles, so I have to do that later. But all these uh, gems or pearls or whatever you want to call these little bubbles that come down on the chain are all going to get done in the stickles. And stickles is a glitter glue by Ranger Tim Holtz product. Tim Holtz and Ranger work together on most of their um, products that they have. It uh, dries a little flatter than some of your other glitter glues. They're highly shined, shiny. They um, come in a variety of different colors. So this one I have is diamond. They come in um, colors where the glitter itself is the same colors as the distress inks. So if you want to match your distress ink with your ink color, you can do that. I'm going to put sparkles on the crown too. Okay, and then we're going to do it all the way around the circle. <laughs> I can't do that all yet, but I can show you it's just a dot in the dots and then kind of little lines on the flat parts. So I'll be going all the way around and I will be taking my black pencil when I find it because it's hiding from me <laughs> for some reason. It's probably because I want to use it. Okay. Black. And we're going to go in and color these lines here. Just going to use the black pen to do that. Or pencil. And up here. And then these little, uh, they're dots in some of them, and some of them are triangles. So I'm going to get both of those. And then I'll kind of shade in a little bit better underneath here with a little bit of black, too. It's kind of hard for me to see that, but I will get that down. And the little circles, the little triangle areas. And then the areas in between, I think I will, after I get this all colored in, I will go over with the um, pink Distress ink and put the, it's not pink, pink, it's um, Victorian velvet. 
<laughs> and I'll put that in the uh, whitish areas here and it'll blend nicely in with the color of my swan. And any parts that I want to accent with the black, I will just go over the line to bring them out again. So other than that, where's my ink? I just add that right in there. Depending on where I have the ink on the pad. Get a little of that on there too. <laughs> there we go. Just where it's colored. And that was going to be the oxide, so I have to wipe some of that off of the colors. Anyway, so I will finish up doing the black in here. I will put um, some stickles in here also, probably in each one of these little dots and inside these. And then, like I said, I will touch up a little bit of this with the black um, pencil, just to add a little more definition in them. Just kind of like that. And when I get done, I will show you what the picture looks like, all dry and sparkly. So thanks guys for watching. I really appreciate it. I will fill up his eye with black too and put a little dot in there with the black pencil. <laughs> so thanks for watching, subscribing, and if you would like to give me a thumbs up, I'd appreciate it. Ring the bell for notifications. And I really appreciate y'all sitting through and watching these videos. So I hope you all have a wonderful weekend, day, evening, whatever it is for you while you're watching this video. Take care, everyone. Bye now.